Welcome to Airflow Summit 2021. For today's session, I'm going to talk about how we leverage Airflow at uh, Cloudflare to build uh, provision as a service. So it's a platform that we use to automate uh, provisioning our uh, at Cloudflare. So without further ado, um, let's begin with a brief introduction about myself. My name is Jet. I'm an SRE at Cloudflare uh, in the Edge team, uh, but I've recently joined the infrastructure engineering team here at Cloudflare. So as an Edge SRE, our goal is to have a reliable Edge production environment to best support Cloudflare's uh, services to customers uh, and engineers uh, to efficiently deploy to. Uh, to those who, so what does Cloudflare do? Uh, we are on a mission to help build a better internet. With our suite of products and services, Cloudflare protects and accelerates any internet application online without adding hardware, installing software, or changing a, a, a line of code. Um, we have about 25 internet properties uh, that are using Cloudflare and our network spans in 200 cities in over 200 countries, and we operate within 100 milliseconds of 99% of the internet connected population in the developed world. Uh, just for context, the blink of an eye is uh, 300 to 400 milliseconds. So 17% of the Fortune 1000s are uh, paying Cloudflare customers. Um, we serve 25 million HTTP requests per second on average and goes to peak at about 30 million. We consistently do 9.4 million DNS queries per second, about 811 billion queries a day, and that's 24 trillion queries a month. In Q1 of this year alone, uh, 70 billion cyber threats were, were blocked uh, each day. So to, to learn more uh, about us, you, you can visit cloudfair.com uh, for, for for more information. So what, what is, pro, what is pro provisioning? Um, provisioning can be broad and it encompasses all of the operations that are needed to build and operate a data center. But for this session, we're only going to talk about the, the two uh, main operations that fall under provisionings, which is uh, expansion and decommissions. So uh, expansion is the, the process of adding new machines to expand capacity of the data center. And decommissions is the process of permanently removing machines for retirement in a data center. And with that space cleared, uh, we, we would eventually just have to add the newer generations of, of machines uh, to, to, the, to those uh, 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 space. So provisioning is complex in large part uh, because of the amount of manual effort uh, that's required and careful coordination between data center infrastructure operations, network operations, and SREs. So um, SREs used to carefully follow steps from an extremely detailed standard operating procedure, uh, often copying command line snippets. and pasting it into terminal windows. So to, to give you a breakdown of the common manual actions performed by an engineer uh, when doing provisioning, so an SRE has to log on to remote hosts where our common tools are installed and then copy pasting commands from the SOP into the terminal and executing it. Also, uh, and some of the steps uh, require the person to actually view um, Grafana dashboards and other uh, internal dashboards that we use uh, in order before a person can actually proceed to the next step. So by now you could already imagine like what the computer screen would be like for this person. So there's like multiple active terminal screens and you have multiple browsers lo loaded with these dashboards. And of course the, the SOP on the side. And that's just if you're working on a single data center. So what more if you're working on multiple data centers? So Cloudflare is growing very fast and we continue to build new data centers and expand existing new ones. 
as we continue to scale, we needed to come up with a much more efficient way of executing the procedures in the SOP. We need to tackle it in a way where we are able to handle the demand of expansions and think in terms of how we could re remove uh, possible uh, human error. Provision as a service was born. And this is where Airflow came into the picture to help us solve the inefficiencies of the previous provisioning procedure. So as a result, we have totally eliminated the need uh, for engineers to use SSH in connecting to remote systems. In fact, they don't even need accounts in those systems anymore. This gave us guaranteed consistency compared to any manual actions performed by, by a human operator. Um, provisioning has now been fully democratized. Uh, SRE is no longer the only team that can do provisioning. In fact, today, this is now owned by our data center engineering teams. And not only that procedure of doing expansions and decommissions are way faster than before, but they are also even safer than ever. So technically anyone with the correct role and permissions will be able to do expansions and decommissions with a click of a button. So it has totally eliminated the toil for various teams at Cloudflare. Uh, in the case for SREs, this freed people a lot of time to work on automating other stuff, working on other tools and work on projects that would further increase the reliability and scalability of the edge. So overall, it cut by 90% the amount of time our team spent on operational tasks. So le let me show you an example of the manual step that we have in the SOP that uh, instructs SRE to enable any cast. So the one you see at the top, as you can see, the, the engineer has to log into a remote host, copy and paste the command, and before he or she is able to execute the command, uh, a place, uh, the router placeholder has to, to be changed with, with the actual value. Now in Airflow, this step became uh, uh, a single task in the DAG uh, named enable anycast. And this code exactly does the, the same thing uh, without requiring humans to do the steps above. So it's much safer, it's faster, and it's consistent. Provisioning as a service uh, has integration with, with, with other uh, systems. So our integration with SaltStack made the conversion of running commands via SSH into API calls possible. And we, we query ticket information and write information into JIRA tickets as part of the workflow. We use Google Chat uh, for real-time notifications and all, all, all other notifications uh, that we have in Airflow. In fact, in, in one of our other use cases, we even have bots that we can interact over chat and that can execute an Airflow uh, workflow. And for cases where um, immediate intervention is required, we, we use PagerDuty as the fastest means of escalating and getting the attention of this uh, user. Like say, for example, the, the on-call person on provisioning uh, on, on that shift. And we also integrate with uh, Prometheus to, to get metrics. So at Cloudflare, uh, we use Thanos. So we have custom operators that can query Thanos to get the Prometheus information. So with, with this integration, this eliminated the need for humans to launch uh, browsers to view Grafana dashboards and other internal dashboards that we have. And we, we mostly use uh, Prometheus operator as a, as a sensor for, for this task. Speaking of sensors, um, we use sensors to set uh, the dependencies between tasks or even DAGs so that one does not run until the dependency has been met. So here are two examples of, of, uh, of the code. So at the top, uh, you see uh, the DNS sensor, uh, which basically waits until certain machines has resolved to their assigned uh, host names. So we use this for uh, expansions, for example. And um, the, the one at the bottom is a sensor that 
sends a intervention notification uh, to the user and then ask for an input. So in this case, um, it is asking for a change request uh, ticket uh, information so that the user will get notified and then you know, tr try to intervene uh, after. Now, um, you might ask, like, how do we provide the input back to the running dad? So we, we have two methods of doing this. So the first one is the dad manager. The DAG manager allows us to do all kinds of stuff, such as controlling the, the behavior of a DAG, and of course, submitting the inputs back to a running DAG, among others. So how this works is that these data center DAGs that you see on the screenshot, um, they, they, they use a JSON formatted uh, variable that it uses for the lifetime of the DAG run. And whenever we want to submit the, uh, an input to the running DAG, we trigger DAG manager and pass in our input as JSON. And DAG manager will process and inject this input back to the, the target DAG. Um, crafting JSON is not easy for, uh, for basic users. So the, the other option that we have is through a custom user interface, uh, rendering a form that users can fill in to submit their input back to a running DAG. Uh, this method is the preferred choice because it's simple, it's much faster than triggering a DAG. Because as you know, if you trigger a DAG, then there's a bit of latency involved there before uh, the variable can actually be added in. So provisioning is, is complex. Um, as I mentioned earlier in, 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 in the slides, um, having complex workflows means that we, needed, uh, we need a workflow to branch or only go down a certain path based on an arbitrary condition, which typically related to something that has happened in an upstream path, in an upstream task. Um, So branching is uh, sorry over that. So branching is used to perform a conditional logic uh, that is to execute a set of tasks uh, based off a condition. So with this one, we we simply use the Airflow's branch Python operator to achieve this. But sometimes branching is not enough. Uh, in this example, we have data center DAGs triggering an external DAG, uh, the helper DAG in, in this diagram. So we call this DAG the provision helper. So how it works is that provision helper can execute a workflow depending on the input it received. And, but what makes this execution uh, different is that it can repeatedly rerun the exact same workflow until a certain requirement has been satisfied. To give you an example use case, uh, say if we are trying to decommission 100 machines, and instead of decommissioning these machines in one go, we might instead decide to do it gradually. Provision Helper can decommission the 100 machines then into batches. So the first 20%, so first 20 machines first, then the next batch, and so on and so forth. The data center DAGs will then be able to detect the completion and will proceed executing downstream tasks uh, to complete the DAG run. So let's, let's now talk about how we've written our DAGs for scale. And uh, I'd like to go back a little bit, uh, go back and talk about expansions uh, to, to give a clear example. So expansions, are done in two phases. So phase one, where machines are powered on, boots our custom Linux kernel, and then starts the, the phase one stage of provisioning. And then for phase two, those newly provisioned machines are enabled to receive uh, production traffic. To reflect these phases in our automation workflow, we've also written, uh, we've also wrote two separate DAGs, one for each phase. But remember, as, as you can also see in the map, we have over 200 data centers. So if we were to write a DAG for each, 
we would end up writing and maintaining 400 files. A viable option could be to parameterize our DAGs. At first glance, uh, that sounds uh, a reasonable uh, option. However, it poses one major challenge. Tracking the progress of DAG runs will be difficult and too confusing uh, for most users. So following the, the software design principle called DRY and inspired by the uh, factory method design pattern in programming, we've instead uh, written both phase one and phase two DAGs in a way that allow them to dynamically create different DAGs with exactly the same tasks and fully re reusing the exact same code. So as a result, we, we only maintain one file for each phase. And as we add data centers, we are also able to generate a DAG for those data centers instantly without writing a single line of code. Now, how do we actually execute DAGs at scale? So um, I'm, not going to, I'm not going into the details of how our, our amazing colleagues from the core SRE have configured our airflow infrastructure, but really the, the main ingredient for, uh, for us to execute DAGs at scale is using the Kubernetes executor in combination with the highly available scheduler. So to those who aren't familiar uh, of this setup yet, Kubernetes Executor creates a new worker pod for every task instance that needs to be uh, executed. And once on, upon the completion of the task, the worker pod gets killed. Um, so earlier, um, I, I also mentioned about the, the customizations that we did for, for our use case in order to improve the usability and user experience. So having a tailor-made user interface uh, customizations increases the acceptability and adoption of the tool. So because if it's easy for the users, then users will love it and then users would, would use it. So one of the main features of provisioning as a service is that it provides a custom menu called provisioning as you've seen here uh, in, in, in this slide. And this menu will only be available, uh, will only be visible to accounts that belongs to the role that does provisioning. So as you can see there, we, we have several um, uh, interfaces that are available under, under this uh, menu. Um, Another example that, that we have um, is, uh, this is the interface for doing expansions. Um, it has a collapsible area that allows you to, to view expansions, uh, to view the expansion plan. So uh, for, for those who are uh, familiar with Terraform, for example, when you do a Terraform plan, then you'll see what the execution plan would be. So this actually mimics that uh, functionality. And then uh, there's uh, this interface is for uh, doing decommissions. So how this works is that a user simply provides uh, a rack ID as an input and provision as a service will retrieve all the machines that reside in that rack. And the user can then select which machines will be decommissioned. Um, it's also possible to, to actually filter the results by hardware generation and serial number prefix. So, and of course, uh, lastly, uh, provision as a service has custom dashboards as well, uh, such as the one you see here uh, for various stuff that's being used uh, uh, to, to give us uh, better insights into how uh, the tool is working or doing based on the functionalities that we have in place. So what's what's the future for uh, provision as a service? So ultimately, um, our goal is to have a autonomous provision as a, as a service. For expansions, our ultimate goal is a fully autonomous system that monitors new servers has been racked in our edge data centers. 
and automatically trigger expansions with no human intervention. Although at the moment we we have um, we actually have uh, several initiatives that is actually also onboarding them into this platform to do further uh, automations uh, using Airflow. So, and I guess we that's it, and we've reached the the last uh, slide. So. If I may able to pitch like our network, Cloudflare continues to rapidly grow. So uh, if anyone on, on the attendees are interested in joining us, then we have a number of positions for the infrastructure engineering team. So I would like to encourage you to visit our website and yeah, view those roles that you might be interested in, or you can just send me an email directly and yeah.